like yours is 13 nanomoles per liter, which when you convert that is 374.64 nanograms per deciliter. Well, hello, and it's me, Jody Hardy back again today. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I know it's been a while, but something kind of came up a little recently. There's a YouTuber by the name of More Plates, More Dates. I know he's quite big in the industry now these days. Anyway, he's an incredibly smart, intelligent uh, guy whenever it comes to pharmaceutical and, you know, supplemental stuff in the fitness industry. He's just very intelligent. And recently, he came out with a video where he went over Matt Does Fitness's drug test results. And I personally found them very interesting because I can kind of relate to Matt in one specific way and let me just show you the clip here like yours is 13 nanomoles per liter which when you convert that is 374.64 nanograms per deciliter so like if you saw that right. normally okay. you'd be right, like right. you'd be like huh like this guy if at just a glance at that number you might be like oh this guy's on trt he probably just came off of his trt for a few weeks and then got his blood tested to then show look, I'm natural. My test is in the range. As you see from that clip, Matt doesn't necessarily have the highest test levels on the reference range. I believe Derek references it as 250 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. And I found this interesting because I myself have been well into the fitness and uh, health aspect of my life for the past two years really strong. But last year is when I really tried to dial things in, really crank up what I was doing with my health aspect of life. Right around April of last year, I went to go get blood work done. And at this time, I was I was a little heavier than I am at the moment. <laughs> Had a little bit more fat than usual. I wasn't living the optimum lifestyle, you know. I wasn't sleeping the best at night all the time. Just eating a bunch of crap whenever I wanted to. I was just putting on, you know, junk weight. Still going to the gym, but things just weren't as pristine as they should be. Per se. So I went and got my blood work done, like I said, in April of last year. They didn't actually tell me my results, <laughs> which I thought was funny, but my insurance is weird and the testing in my area is also kind of weird as well. They told me I was, I was okay and I was like, all right, fine, sounds good, whatever. Fast forward about six and a half, seven months, depending on the date, I went and got blood work again. And at this time I was actually in prep for a powerlifting meet in December. And I had actually gotten into basically the best shape of my entire life. I, from, from basically that April time period to December, I was on a slight cut trying to body recomp, maintain strength, and build up as much muscle power as much as I could while still trying to lose some fat and get into better shape. And I dialed everything in as much as I possibly could. I had everything counted up. I was following calories. I was following macros, micros, as, as close as I could using Chronometer. That's another one. Chronometer is a very good app. Derek, great suggestion, man very useful. Anyway, so I was getting eight plus hours of sleep every single night. You know, I was getting plenty of sunlight, eight to 12,000 steps a day. I was really, really getting into it. And I dropped about 20 pounds in that seven, eight month time period up into the competition. Things were going really well. My strength was actually raising a little bit, not drastically, but my training was dialed in as well. This was actually the first time I ever had a program, which was pretty wild. In November, I decided to get blood work again, and I waited anxiously. One day while I was at work, I get a random phone call, and they uh, they tell me my results, except this time they actually give me a number. And the number was 296 nanograms per deciliter total test. And this, I, I didn't even know how to comprehend. They also told me the results of my previous my previous test and they were 334 i believe they said nanograms per deciliter so actually back when my lifestyle was a little bit less dialed in six months prior on that specific day my free test was higher and i know that all this stuff can be you know relegated to a so certain amount on sleep and all kinds of different factors what you had the day before what the what you had the week before all of it but I could not wrap my head around how I was, you know, so dialed in with everything in my life, is, or at least the best it had ever been. So, I mean, at this moment, this is as good as it's going to get. And it was a 294. I tried to forget about it. You know, I talked to my doctor. They actually scheduled me an endocrinologist appointment six months later, which is actually coming up very soon. 
So I may or may not do a follow up to this if anything interesting comes out of that. Anyway, point of this video, Derek and Matt kind of made an interesting point just a little bit later on in the video. But it doesn't mean by default that if you're at 375 or 400 that you're low. Like if you are healthy functioning and everything is working perfectly, maybe you have a higher density of androgen receptors. You know, maybe you have greater gene expression at the receptor level from the lesser amount of testosterone. In that clip, Derek brings up how in your gene structure, you could potentially have androgen receptors that are more sensitive to testosterone and maybe regulate differently than others. And obviously this is true, but I don't know. I just think this is a really interesting topic. So obviously if you guys have any insight on this, maybe leave stuff in the comments below, you know, I want to have a discussion. I just thought it was interesting because obviously, like I said, I don't consider myself a specimen. I don't think I'm obviously, obviously I'm not cream the crop or else I'd probably have better test levels, but I digress. It's just really interesting because I feel like I have a pretty decent, solid natural physique at 20 years old after only two years of lifting and really a year and a half of good, solid, structured lifting. It's just wild to think that this could even be a th option. And like I said, next month, I'm going to the endocrinologist and we're going to really see what is missing here. Because even with that low T level, I guess somewhere through puberty, I actually developed gyno. I have a theory. I could be completely stupid, but I think it's because my body aromatizes so much into estradiol or E2, I guess. Maybe I downregulate test production to keep below a certain point because of how much I aromatize. You see, going through puberty, I was big. I was a big, chunky boy. I had a lot of weight, and I know they say that's not good because obviously the more fat tissue you have on your body, the more you can aromatize. That is obviously the case for me being probably 20% less body fat than I ever was at my peak, I'm still producing probably the same amount of testosterone. I don't know. I'm not the most knowledgeable guy ever. Like I said, this video, I just found it interesting because Matt, his T levels were like 80, 90 nanograms per deciliter better than mine. Obviously he has a crazier physique and is much stronger than me in just about every single way there is possible. And you know, plenty of natty or nots done on him, but I'm after seeing this video, it kind of, I don't know, they even discuss it in the video about how it can give natural people, natural bodybuilders, natural lifters in general, a lot of hope because if he can look like that naturally, then, you know, what's really stopping you? And obviously he has incredible genetics. That's just, a, that's just a blatant truth of this entire thing. I just think it's interesting. Like I said, I want to have a discussion down in the comments. Let me know how you've been on your lifting journey. If you've gotten blood work done, what were your levels like? What are some things that you can kind of recommend or that you know that you've done and really that's about it other than that all i can say is check out Derek's stuff really really knowledgeable knowledgeable person i wouldn't know half the stuff that i spew out of my mouth on a daily basis if it wasn't for his channel and so yeah thank you guys for watching i will see you in the next one whenever that may be <laughs>